In this video, I'm going to be going over how to easily export multiple images from one file in Photoshop. And basically, as soon as you make the changes and save it, it'll export them to whatever file type you deem. And it lets you pick between JPEG, PNG, or GIF because this is really intended for web uses. So as an example of what this might be cool for is if you're doing an ad campaign across Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest, something like that, and you need several different file formats, all that might share a similar common image. This lets you just build one document, make the changes one time, and then you're pretty much good to go from there. So to quickly show you how this exports things, I'll just bring in this file right here where it has automatically exported these three different images based on the names that I gave them. For whatever reason, I call them potato one, two, and three. So this is the top image right here. The second one is right here, and then the one below that. So as you can see, it exported these images. And if I very quickly, I have a separate file with just this background picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. I'm just gonna flip this around and rotate it and then apply that change and save this file. And once again, I'm gonna open up that file. So you can see it automatically, as soon as I save that, it rotated the bridge automatically across these three images. So for pretty obvious reasons, this is a really awesome way to save some time. So I'm gonna show you how to go in and do this yourself in case this is something that you might find useful in some projects. So the basic tool that this is using inside Photoshop is called Generate Image Assets, and you get there by going to File, and from File, you go to Generate, and then click on Image Assets once you have a file built up and ready to go. But let's start from scratch here so you can really figure out how to do this for yourself. So I'm just gonna go to file and then new, and I'm gonna make a new document right here. It's 1920 by 1080 pixels, but make it whatever size you want it to be. Just keep in mind that the base document size will have to be big enough to house all your different files. So you can make it as big as it needs to be, then maybe crop it down later if you want to. So I'll just do this tutorial video, and then I'll hit okay and that will open this up and I'll also just quickly save this inside a folder. So I'm gonna go to save as, and then you're gonna wanna put this inside its own folder. So make a folder on your desktop or wherever you wanna stick it, and then go ahead and save this new file inside that folder. So this is called tutorial example for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. And if for example, you wanted to easily switch out a background image like I did right here, you're also gonna to wanna to open up that image and save that as a different file name for a reason I'll show. So you don't have to do this, you don't have to make a separate image that is easily changeable. But in case you do want to do something like that, it is very time saving if you're using a common background image. What you're going to want to do is just bring that image into Photoshop. So I just dragged it into Photoshop here. So this is an image of a jellyfish that I got from unsplash.com. So once you have your image file opened up and ready to go that you might want to use in the background, just like the Golden Gate Bridge right here, you can also save this file. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. And this is in the same folder as the other Photoshop document, you actually wanna save it as a Photoshop document. This defaulted as a JPEG, so I'm gonna change that to Photoshop, and I'm gonna change the name to image.psd and save it. So now this image is what I will be using for the background of all these different things we're gonna be making. So back to the tutorial video PSD here, and basically you can have it export either by a layer. So if you just wanted to bring in a photo layer and that's it, I'm gonna show you how to bring in this image right here to make it really easy to have it automatically update as soon as you update this image. So what you wanna do if you wanna work like that, it's a pretty cool way to work, go to File, and then you wanna to go to Place Linked. And you wanna place Linked because when it links, it basically links to that Photoshop file, where if you embed it, it'll embed that image inside the Photoshop document. So if you make a change, it won't automatically update. Where if you place a linked file and you have this document open as well as your image itself open, and you save the image, it'll automatically update here. So it's just a, it's a cool way to work basically. So I'm gonna go ahead and place linked and select image.psd. So it brings in this image of a jellyfish and I'm gonna resize this down to be something smaller. And basically it's really easy to go ahead and export these images into their own folder using that image generate feature. So I'm just gonna duplicate this image layer right here so I have this original one kind of ready to go without a modified name. So with that layer selected, I'm gonna hit Control J on a PC or Command J on a Mac to duplicate it and then I can go ahead and rename it. And the renaming part is really important. So you wanna name this like you would an image on the web. So if you use multiple words, you want to connect them with a dash or an underscore, and you want to avoid using any special characters. So just make it really simple. So I'm just going to name this jellyfish. 
And to show how to name it properly for the web, I'm going to do jellyfish-image. And then you want to finish it off with the extension that you want it to save as. So either JPEG, GIF, or PNG. So .jpg for JPEG, .gif for GIF, and .png for PNG. So this layer has now been named jellyfishimage.jpg. So I'm just going to click off that so it goes ahead and applies. And if I want this to automatically export to a folder with just this image at the size that I have set it currently, I just go to File and then I go to Generate. And from Generate, you want to click on Image Assets. And basically, as soon as you do that, it should go ahead and open up a new folder with that asset generated. If that doesn't happen, you might have to control S or command S on this document to go ahead and save it. But I'll open up that folder here right now. So here's the jellyfish image that we just saved. It's called jellyfishimage.jpg and it's been sized to the size that we went ahead and set. So this is the most basic way of working like this, basically doing it by a layer. But a really cool way of doing this is using folders and then naming those folders what you want them to be called. I'm just going to move this jellyfish image out of the way here. So you can name the folder what you want the folder to be called and then whatever you place inside that folder will be exported by the name of that folder. So that's really cool, for example, with this Be the Bridge, very motivational quote. If you want to have an image layer and then some type layers or even multiple image layers, whatever it is you want to do, they're all inside a folder right here. And then it's exported based on the name of that folder, so potato-1.jpg. So in this jellyfish one, I'm going to make a new folder. I'll call this superfast jellyfish whoops, jellyfish.jpg. So now the folder is called superfast jellyfish.jpg. And I'm going to go ahead and move this image at the bottom here. I'm just going to turn off the visibility of this jellyfish image by clicking that eyeball icon. I'm going to move the image layer that we previously put in here inside of this superfast jellyfish.jpg folder. And I'm also going to go over to the toolbar right here. And from the toolbar, it's usually just below the type tool, kind of depending on how you have this set up. But if you highlight over it, it's called rectangle tool. And U is the default keyboard shortcut. And if you click on hold on that, you get a bunch of different shapes you could possibly use. But like, let's say you have a specific image size that you want this image to be. You can go ahead and set up a shape layer inside this folder to be the perfect size and then mask over or use a clippy mask more appropriately on your image to apply it to that shape. So I'm going to click once so it brings up this create rectangle dialog box. And I'll just say this is going to be 300 pixels by 500 pixels. It doesn't matter what size you decide to make the rectangle, it's just whatever size you need it to be. You can also change the size later if you want to. So here's that rectangle that I just made right here on my screen. It's called a rectangle one inside my super fast jellyfish folder. And if you have your properties window open, which is under window and then properties sort of near the bottom, there is a width and a height right here that you could then adjust later on if you wanted to. And this little link icon right here basically is either linking these sizes. So if I make this 350 wide and hit enter to apply it, these aren't currently linked. So it just did the width and not the height. But if I link these, so then it's kind of bolded right here and make this something like 375 and hit enter. It also increases the height at the same proportion. So you can either link these or not link these depending on how you want to work. But I don't want them linked. So I'll just leave this at 350 by 500. But the size really doesn't matter. So you want to actually, if you're going to have this basically serve as a mask for the photo, you want to drag the image layer on top of the rectangle layer that we just made. And then bring that image layer on top of it. And to transform the size of this image layer, just hit Control T on a PC or Command T on a Mac. And then I'm going to hold Alt or Option on a Mac as well as Shift to basically make sure it sizes perfectly from the center and is also proportional so it isn't like a weird size that doesn't fit. So that looks like it's roughly the right size to easily fit over my box. So what we want to do now is apply this image as a clippy mask on top of this rectangle. So once again, just make sure that image is on top of this shape that you drew. And then you can either right click on that image and go to Create Clipping Mask or you can hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac. Bring your cursor just below, kind of on the line between the two objects, and you'll see a little icon up here that looks like a box with a down arrow. Click once, and as you can see, it went ahead and applied this image of a jellyfish on top of my box. 
pretty darn easy to do there. And then you can just click on that image layer and move it around and also resize it to better fit what you're trying to do here. Kind of depending, oh my God, what have I done? Depending on what you're trying to do. So I actually kind of like having a little bit of this water on the top here. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it sized, something like this. And then I could also go in here and add some type. So I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard, or I can click on the type tool over here in the type toolbar. Click right here so I can write my own little statement. So I'm gonna write super fast jellyfish, if I can type all right. And I'm just gonna bring this type over to the center and resize it a bit until it looks pretty good here. So this is the first image that I went ahead and made. And if I bring over my document where the tutorial video assets have been automatically generating right here, we have the original jellyfish image that we saved right away. And we already have a brand new one called super fast jellyfish because that's what we call the file super fast jellyfish .jpeg. And here is the automatically saved image really fast, really easy to do. And then if you want to make multiples of these, that's also super easy to do. What I tend to like to do personally, is just click on that folder where we have the work already saved. So I'm just gonna move this folder off to the side here so it's not in the middle. And then with that folder selected, just click on that in your layers toolbar, hit Control plus J on a PC or Command plus J on a Mac to duplicate it. And this is the duplicated copy. So I'm just gonna bring this over to the side here. I'm gonna rename this file because it's called superfastjellyfish.jpg copy. I'm gonna remove that copy because I don't want the copy copy in there. And I'm also gonna rename this superfastjellyfish fish dash two and I'm gonna change the extension from JPEG to something like PNG so dot PNG so now when this saves out, it'll actually save out as a PNG file as opposed to a JPEG and once again the third option is GIF so JPEG, PNG, or GIF, whichever of those works best for you, feel free to go with that. And also I'm gonna click on my rectangle layer here and in the properties toolbar, I'm just gonna change the size to basically simulate me doing another size using the same artwork. So the width is 350, the height is 500. Once again, if you don't see the properties here, just go to window and then properties. It's super useful when you're dealing with the shapes inside of Photoshop. So instead of 350 wide, let's make this one 500 wide. I'm just gonna type that in there and hit enter here. And the height, let's do this something much skinnier, like let's say 250, just to make it look quite a bit visually different. So at this time, I'm gonna need to click on my image and kind of reposition where my jellyfish is. I can also transform this image independently of the one we did previously to make it kind of better fit this new aspect ratio right here. And also the type, same deal, I can bring this type over here, transform that and resize it to best fit the document that we have. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this document, bring over my tutorial assets folder that's been automatically generating. So we have the original superfastjellyfish.jpg looking pretty good right there. And now we have a brand new superfastjellyfish, but if you check the extension on this, it might be pretty small on your screen, but it is a PNG. So right now we have the new size of the image, superfastjellyfish, and then it's a PNG as opposed to a JPEG. And as a final thing that I'm going to show that I personally think is pretty cool, I'm gonna turn back on this layer right here called jellyfishimage.jpg, and I'm gonna make it something just a little bit bigger here. If you want to, you can actually apply either multiple names or multiple extension types to a single image by typing out the name and the extension and then adding a comma followed by a space and the new name. So I'm just gonna double click on this name right here and hit Control C on a PC or Command C on a Mac to copy it. I'm gonna hit the comma mark to add a comma add a space and then hit control V on a PC or command V on a Mac to paste. And I'm gonna change the extension from JPEG to PNG, just like that. And for the third one, I'll do a GIF. So once again, a comma space, I'm gonna paste this and just change this name to super fast jelly, or wait, this one's just called jellyfish-image.gif. So I'm gonna hit enter to apply my changes and then go ahead and save the document. Once again, I'm gonna open up that folder that I had previously opened up. If I can find it, I must have closed it. So I'm gonna navigate back to the tutorial example and then the tutorial video assets. And if you look at these images, these three that were just made, it's jellyfishimage.gif. So this is the GIF version, this one is the JPEG version, and this one is the PNG version. And if you wanted to just 
create the same image with the different names for whichever reason, not totally sure why you'd want to do that. But if that's something you want to do, you can use the exact same steps to make that happen. And once again, if I go to the image.psd right here, which is our original jellyfish image, I'm just going to unlock the background layer really quick. Then I'm going to flip this around 180 degrees. So we have a super fast upside down jellyfish, which are super rare marine animals, and then go back to the tutorial video.psd. You can tell it's automatically updated all these to have an upside down super fast jellyfish. And then once again, if I go back to the folder that has our assets inside of it, and I check these out, you can tell it automatically updated all of these. Our jellyfish are now all upside down as opposed to being right side up. And as you can see, that's a huge time saver. It does this all instantly. It's just automatically generating all this stuff with very little input from me. If I go back here, flip this around so it's right side up once again save it and i'll go back here and just save this document as well and now automatically generated these are all right side up and good to go so the final thing to think about when you're doing this is if you don't see these things updating just make sure they're all visible inside your layers window and also make sure you named the things that you want to export appropriately so the name of the object and then the extension so jellyfish-image.jpg. Don't use any special characters that you wouldn't use when naming a typical website image file because it might freak this thing out and then it might not work. So really just stick to the basics when you're naming stuff. And once again, you can name either a layer or you can name a folder. And if you name a folder, anything inside of that folder will be exported under the folder's name. And you can also name things inside folders to have them export separately. So I'll just rename this one, which is an image of a jellyfish right here. It's this one. If I rename this something like pumpkin jellyfish.png, and then I'll go ahead and save this document, go back into my assets right here. It just generated right there the pumpkin-jellyfish.png file while still generating the original file that it was based on, which is this super fast jellyfish right here. So once again, if this isn't working for some reason, just make sure all these layers are visible and then you can maybe turn them all off and individually turn them back on if for some reason they were not properly generating. In all of my experience, that has always fixed it. And this step with the separate image that you brought in by going to file place linked you don't have to do that if you don't want to it's just a bit of a time saver if you're using the same image across multiple different sized assets but that's it for this tutorial i do hope you found it helpful i think this is a really cool way to work it's a big time saver if you're doing a lot of stuff that has similarities and you just wanted to automatically export all at the same time and let photoshop really do the heavy lifting for you so feel free to leave your comments about this video if you have any questions leave them in the comment section or if you just want to talk to other people that have watched this video feel free to do that and if you did find this video helpful feel free to leave a thumbs up and also if you really enjoyed this video consider subscribing i do my best to create new content just like this for illustrators and designers pretty much every week thanks so much for watching